welcome to our video today. We have some of our lovely Brinsbury College students here ready to chat about their experiences, answer some questions and offer some advice to those of you who may be in the process of applying to Brinsbury College right now. My name is Holly and I'm the School and Community Liaison Officer for Brinsbury College. Uh, we'll start by introducing our students here today who will tell you about what course they're studying, how long they've been here with us and any other roles that they have within the college community. Let's start with Ethan. Uh, hi, um, I'm Ethan. I've been at Brinsbury for four or five years now. I'm a level three year two equine student and I'm also the vice president of the student union. Great. Rafi? Oh, uh, hi, I, I'm Rafi. I'm doing horticulture, uh, level one horticulture and I've been here since September and I currently don't have any other roles within the college. Find plenty of time for that and Sarah? Hi I'm Sarah, I've been at Brinsbury for about two years now and I'm doing level three animal management and I have no other roles. And Jack? Hi I'm Jack, I've been at Brinsbury for uh, nearly two, two, one or two years now, or more, to my knowledge, uh, and I currently ha I'm doing the level two horticulture progression, the, the progression up to level two horticulture, and I don't have any other roles at the moment at Brinsbury. And Lizzie. Hi, I'm Lizzie. I've been at Brinsbury for five, nearly six years now. Uh, three years of those I did equine management. Uh, I did one year in agriculture and I'm currently doing my HND in animal management uh, and I've been a part of the Brinsbury Student Union for five years. Amazing. Right, so let's kick off with some questions. Um, I'm going to come to Rafi first. Um, did you have any prior experience or interest in the course uh, that in influenced your decision to come to Brinsbury? Yes, well, I tried a few other courses at Chai College, but not really for me. And um, I've always loved gardening, and I work in a few gardens around my area. And I, so horticulture was the perfect decision for me. Uh, does anyone have anything to add to you to that question? Does anyone else have any prior experience that influenced their decisions? Yeah, I've been. Um... I've always been around horses growing up and um, so Brinsbury was just sort of like the natural progression for me for me to get all my qualifications and stuff and yeah it was just as far as I could tell the best college in the area and after being here for nearly five years I can say that I definitely made the right decision. Amazing answer. Jack do you want to add? Uh, yes so my mum knows some people who own Bolney Nurse, the people who own Bolney Nursery. So I did a bit of work experience there with them. And that kind of, while I was doing like still my level one horticulture, but what really interested me in the course was the, like learning the knowledge about plants. Yeah, that's a really good answer. Sarah, you had your hand up as well. Um, personally at home, I grew up with no pets in the house. Um, but I always aspired to work with animals ever since I was little and so Brinsbury was the only local college to me that would help me with that first stepping stone of becoming an animal carer. Great answers. Lovely. The next question I've got and I'm going to come to Sarah first for that one again. Um, what are your hopes and ambitions for the future? In the future I hope to become a zookeeper or animal dis at Disney's Animal Kingdom or maybe work at the Irwin Zoo down in Australia. Amazing, so getting some travel in there as well. That sounds, yeah, that sounds amazing. Uh, Jack. Um, so my hope for the uh, future is to hopefully like work in like a like nursery or garden centre or maybe go on to something bigger and more ambitious in the future. It's a good way to 
it's a good way to start your your career path though isn't it starting something that you're familiar with you said you've done some work experience before in a nursery and yeah. so you're having that as a good foundation get some get that confidence up get your knowledge up and then who knows anything else could happen couldn't it indeed uh rafi um well i'm hoping either to be able to start a garden design business and I want to become a garden designer or to go in go into teaching in horticulture after progressing. It's really nice that you've um, said about garden design there because I think some people underestimate the amount of of work that goes into creating beautiful spaces. Uh, there's just millions of choices within the horticultural industry the different jobs from lawn care business to a groundsmen even traveling the world to discover plants so there's no shortages of jobs within that industry brilliant uh lizzie do you want to go next yeah so um i originally was going to uh want to become an equine veterinary nurse i've wanted to do that role since i was about 11 years old and my high school then helped me get into college to then do that after speaking with lecturers who had a very vast and wide experience in the field and in the industry um, it made me realize that actually maybe that wasn't the job that I wanted to do um, and so I, I worked with many people in the college careers and progression plus uh, staff members and they helped me realize that being a college instructor or lecturer is actually more what is focused towards me um, and so with that I managed to then get on the course that I needed to get on to do that so that's what I'm working towards. Amazing it's really interesting that you highlighted there that you had one one direction in mind from when you were at school and that has changed since coming to college and how, did you find that there was flexibility in being able to to change your decision if you like? Yeah so um, having meetings with the staff members and guys at college um made me weigh up my options and they gave me all the possible options that is uh, available to me at college so there's you know a lot of different career paths and courses that you can go on um to find what is adapted for you and it doesn't matter if you don't have any previous gcse's or you don't have the you know set requirements because there is that course which uh, you can still do which then helps you get the gcse's that you need to get Perfect. I think it's also really important to highlight to people who might be applying right now that the decision you make right now, you've got the option to change um, because I think it can be quite scary when you're applying for college that you think, oh my goodness, this is the decision that's going to influence which way I go in the future. That is not the case. If you come to college, you decide you love the course, but there's potentially a different career path that you might want to follow that you learned about during that time. And um, so many different opportunities come from starting a course at college. Um, Ethan, uh, did you want to, to add to that as well? So, yeah, um, I'm hoping to next year move up to uh, the equine H&D, get a um, degree in that. Um, then I want to apply to the police and work my way towards being a mounted policeman. So, yeah. Again, a really uh, different industry that you think um, not necessarily when you do equine, you wouldn't necessarily think, oh, I could go and do, do mounted uh, police work as well. It's, it, it's no, yeah, um, yeah, I didn't a actually originally want to do that when I came to college. I came in wanted to become a physiotherapist, but um, <laughs> I sort of realised that maybe that wasn't for me and steered more towards the police side of it. Great that you've managed to, to work that out whilst you've been at, at Brinsbury. Um, next question, um, and I'm going to come to uh, Ethan on that one. Um, what would a college week look like for you? So for me on my course, I'm currently doing three days at college a week and outside of obviously COVID outside of this sort of time period, we would be doing work experience at an external place. So it'd be three or four days of work a week working towards my qualification, 
So I normally start off the day by getting to college, which um, is really easy to do. There's loads of transport options. Um, I get the train personally up from um, Littlehampton and um, there's a bus service run by the college from Paulbury Station. But there are lots of different buses that come from um, Chichester, Crawley Way and down Brighton Way as well. So, yeah, it's really easy to get up to Brinsbury. So after getting to Brinsbury, I'd normally meet my class in over on Equine. We have a little hut called the cabin where we store all of our stuff, which we're not actually allowed to go into at the moment because it's too close proximity to each other. So, um, yeah, we throw all our stuff in a cabin. Then we go to our class, which would either be theory, practical or work experience. So along with obviously the practical side of it, so like learning basically how to run a yard, um, we have to do theory lessons as well on like biology, um, the legal aspect of it and all that stuff. And um, so we normally have two sessions of work experience a week as well, where we're working on the yard, working with the horses, working with the yard staff. And um, yeah, so just basically working on a yard and yeah, it's just a mixture of all that and riding lessons as well, which um, get thrown in there as well. We normally ride two days a week. So lots going on. It's really diverse for your timetable as well. Um, Lizzie, yeah. next. Yeah, so I have also done uh, the week of Ethan in equine, uh, but if uh, students are after a more practical course. I've also done agriculture. Um, so in that sense, uh, it's still be the same mode of transport or, you know, parent uh, or, you know, a student can drive in. Um, and then you'd start by getting your personal protective equipment, which is a requirement on each course. Um, and you will get a letter beforehand about that and what you need because each course is different. Um, and you will then get ready for the day. Uh, and it depends. Sometimes you will do workshop stuff, so you'll learn how to um, check tractors and trailers and machinery and farming equipment, or you will do some fencing where you will go out into the field with an instructor and you will learn how to fence and you will put up fences. Or during this time, uh, you will be in the lambing shed helping with the animals and the cows and the sheep because they have dairy cows and a dairy parlour at the farm. And they also have sheep that they then birth each year. Um, so yeah, it's a very that's the very practical hands-on side of things where you get a first-hand account and you get to learn how to look after a pregnant ewe and the stages throughout that. Um, and then the theory side is all about crops, it's about grasses, it's about management of fields and uh, the seasonal changes in fields and also about the anatomy and care of farm animals. To uh, pick up on a point that you made there about um, personal protective equipment, um, what sort of um, elements are included and what would you think you would have to provide for yourself? So the stuff that is provided uh, personal protective wise is anything that is outside of the normal working day at college. So if you're dealing with extremely dangerous chemicals or um, perhaps uh, something that could involve heavy equipment, uh, you're given extra PPE, which could be uh, apron, uh, goggles, mask, headwear, uh, gloves, um, any like face visors, anything that keeps you safe out of the normal and stuff that is you have to collect yourself. Um, on the farm would be uh, cotton overalls, uh, which are normally colour coded or they're advised a colour um, and steel toe cap wellies because it does get very muddy and there is there are safety aspects that have to be followed and it's not a sort of sit in the classroom and miss out. It's you have to get stuck in. Uh, so that will have to be bought before you arrive. Um, but obviously every course is different. Uh, like equine, for example, they have you have to wear equestrian clothing and equestrian shoes and safety wear so that you're safe with equestrian animals. Um, and animal care is the same principle, but with walking boots or um, hiking wear uh, to again provide that protection for both the student and the animal. Perfect. And another point I want to pick up on there is that 
whatever course that you're doing at Brinsbury, if you're working outside, that is all seasons as well. So making sure you've got a good waterproof, making sure you've got lots of layers to keep yourself warm in the winter. Whereas the, the, the working week for you guys would be so varied throughout the year, you've got to be prepared for that as well. If it's raining, if it's glorious sunshine, you've got to be ready for all of those weathers. Um, I'm going to come to Ethan because I think he might have something to add to that that point and then I'll come to Jack. Uh, yes, uh, like um, Lizzie was saying about PPE, it is required on the majority of courses at Brinsbury, but um, the college also has several sort of funds set aside to subsidise the cost of acquiring PPE for people who maybe can't afford it. So if you can't afford the PPE, the college will help you acquire that PPE. A really good point thank you that um jack let's come to you um can you just tell me the question again sir if i remember yeah so it was the uh, what does your college week look like so based on mine it's basically wednesday to like friday and during that it's for me it's a mix of practical work experience and theory so and you have to always be and like saying going back to what Lizzie and Ethan said with the PPE, but you always have to be prepared because you don't know, because like me, you never know which days you're going to be doing the practical or which days you're going to be doing the theory, or you could be doing a bit of both. So you always have to bring your PPE, your personal protective equipment in to make sure you're fully prepared. Brilliant. Um just going off of this this college week question as well, obviously you've got a little bit more flexibility and free time than you would in school. Are there any other events or activities that you can participate in beyond your course um, that will enhance your experience at college? Yes, the SU, so the student union runs loads of activities like um, trips, events and um, like outings. So for instance, in a normal year, there would be at least one trip to a theme park. Um, there'd be trips abroad, like there's quite regular trips run to Africa. I think they, they were planning to go to Botswana this year and help with building a school maybe. And um, there were also trips to Greece, New York, and there's always something going on at college, like whether it be, I know this year it's been quite difficult to run stuff, but we've managed here and there. We had Elf Day, in um, December, which was raising money for the Alzheimer's Society. And um, yeah, there's always something going on. Brilliant. Lizzie, do you want to add to that? Alongside what Ethan said with the union, you also have um, separate stuff, like separate trips that's um, course specific. So equine, you We'll go to like open treadmills and you'll go to uh, race yards and race events and uh, you can also do I think last year I went to Ireland with equine uh, so we got to go to World Horse Welfare and we got to go to uh, loads of cool race yards and things so you get to do trips that are course specific as well. That's really great to hear I think we're all craving a little bit of uh extracurricular activity and getting out and about as well so hopefully really looking forward to that when we all come back to college uh, soon. Um, Sarah did you have um, something to add to that as well? Yeah with my course last year I was doing animal management level two we went we had trips like going to monkey world we went on trips to um, well that they were um, like optional you could go to places like Crofts and to some of like the dog shows that they have, which are organised by the um, course leader. And they are really, really helpful as well as like nice to have a nice outing that relates to the course that you're doing. Yeah, I think that's important, isn't it? That you're doing something fun but it's related to to what you're doing so you're going to have an interest in, in and hopefully learn something from that as well do you think the environment of brinsbury campus uh, enhances your enjoyment of 
your college experience? Uh, I definitely think the overall campus, it like helps me with my enjoyment because it's just such a vast area and like being from a small village it kind of helps to have that sort of like it's not so built up mm -hmm. you've got some wide open space that you and i suppose just being outside especially at the moment especially being out, outside at the moment um it helps to clear my mind and like set my train of thought for everything to to be ready for everything yeah no, that's a really good answer. Uh, Lizzie, do you want to uh, tell us about your thoughts? Yeah, so um, obviously the college has hundreds of acres of lush countryside and also woodland trails and walks. Um, and so it provides a really nice scenery to not only work in because there's a lot of outdoor work, um, but also just have a breather. There's lots of great spaces to go and sit and have a bite to eat or just you know, go for a little bit of a walk um, and it's up at Brinsbury is kind of like breathing different air, breathing, breathing a bit of bit of fresh air. It's very nice and it's quite relaxing. Sarah, come to you. Yeah, being at Brinsbury uh, really does give everyone the chance to work with like different with the different varieties of animals, especially the course that I'm doing. Um, it's like each week we have like a rotor of different animals that we get to work with and it's just a nice like refreshing like different thing. You're, um, not, you're not sort of stuck in a classroom environment all yeah. of the time are you? And yeah, nice so that. That you're also having fun with friends both inside and outside the classroom which makes the day much more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Ethan we'll come to you. Uh, yeah, I'd say Brinsbury is a really supportive and friendly environment um, with a great, it's got a great community there. I feel like that's one of the biggest parts of it. The people at Brinsbury are so friendly, so helpful, like students and staff, everyone takes time out of their day to help you if you're having an issue. Like, I know that Lizzie helped me through my um, exams last year, having been through them the year before me. Um, I think it's safe to say that I wouldn't have got through them without her. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, it, it's just a really, really supportive environment. Really supportive. That's that's really nice to hear that it's more like a, a a little community of its own, and that people from all different courses are really friendly. It doesn't matter that you're particularly doing um, a lesson in the same class. Everyone across the whole campus is there to help and support you. It's it's, it's like a little town. Just everyone plays their part. Brilliant. Um, I'm going to leave this to hands up for this question. Um, what has been a highlight of your course so far? Sarah, let's come to you. The highlight of my course has has to be like the hands on experience I get to have with the animals on the centre, as well as the bonding of the friendships between the staff and the students. That's a really great answer. Jack, let's hear from you. Um, the best experience I can take I've got from my course would have have to been my overall boost to my confidence with like some things I never even knew how to like maintain garden tools but since I have learned that from my course I'm able to use that and boost my confidence to understand everything better. Thank you for that answer. Uh, Lizzie? So there have been many highlights from the course I'm doing at the moment, uh, but there was one highlight overall that I always like to bring back because it was a very stressful time. Um, is I pulled out my first lamb down at the farm, and that is to new people who don't. I mean, before that, I'd never even been near a sheep before, um, and the, the staff um, down the farm helped me and spoke me through the process. And yeah, I got to birth help birth a lamb which was really interesting that's insane i can't even imagine what that must be like it must be quite quite rewarding that you're actually putting into practice the skills that you've learned and seeing yeah. new life come into the world that must be intense um ethan let's hear from you 
for me it'd have to be the people um just meeting like-minded people who share my interests has been so rewarding i mean i've made so many friends through Brinsbury, not only in my own class but outside of that just everyone there is just super friendly and super easy to get on with that's lovely to hear and rafi can you hear me now yes <laughs> well I, I really enjoy the fact that within the course there's a mixture of both theory and practical so it might be that we're doing theory in the morning and practical in the afternoon and also there's really good learning support team there and that was one of the things when i first came to college i was very anxious about the when I met all of the support staff, it's just it boosted my confidence by about 10 times. And uh, I'd say they're all very helpful and reassuring, to, especially to newcomers to the college. Also, um, my social skills has, have improved massively since coming to Brinsbury. So, and I've made a few more friends, so that's really good. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> Jack, do you want to add to that? Uh, yes, I do. Going back to what you're saying, Rafi, about the support staff, mm -hmm. um, it's like all the lecturers I've met while well, I've been at Brinsbury, they've all been really supportive and really helpful in understanding everything. Because when I first started, I had no clue of what I was doing with anything. And since then, I've had all these lecturers help me the, the course leaders and the lecturers they're all so passionate about what they do and they want to make sure that you're comfortable and enjoying it as well they're, yes. they're, they are there to, to teach you but they're there to make sure that you're having a good time with it as well and because um sorry uh, the, the tsd course i did was the animal care mm -hmm. so i did that but then like i got interested in horticulture and that's what i'm doing now the progression to that and i think and like I can't remember who said it, but it's like you shouldn't you don't just have that one opportunity towards you. You can always switch and do another one or maybe go back to that one if you don't like that. But it's always worth giving every giving everything at the point you are at a try because you'll never know until you do it. That's really, really good point. And um, Sarah, you're not in there. Did you have something to add? Yeah, with the whole staff thing, like the the um. The staff on the centre are really, really, we're all like a massive family. We're not all just like a bunch of strangers who don't really just, you know, we don't think about anything. We don't talk about anything. We all have a good laugh. We're just, we're all comfortable with each other. So it's nice to have that sense of like belonging. And Lizzie, we'll finish off with you. Yeah, so um, just going with what Sarah's saying as well, um, college is not like high school. It's very different from high school and the staff actually treat you with respect. It's a first name basis. It's not a Mr or Mrs. You know, you don't sit in uniform rows doing the same text. Uh, it's catered and works around you. So you get the help that you need, whatever that may be, to complete the course to the best of your ability and it's okay if there you know help is needed i've had to need help for many things on the course both personal and academic and i've been given the support by the college to help achieve what i needed to achieve um they they get on a personal level with you and yeah they they their job is to care and they do it very well fabulous answer um the next question i've got here is um, it's more of a statement to begin with, but there's a focus in the media at the moment about greener living and sustainability. Um, how do you feel about being on a course that sort of contributes to this effort? Um, Ethan, I think you had your hand up first there. Um, I'd have to say it's not just the course, it's um, the entire college. I mean, this year in the SU, we each year we have something called key focuses which are basically what our aims are for this year and this year one of our primary aims is environmental state environment you know what i'm trying to say um, but yeah 
do I redo that or? No, carry on. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so this year we're looking at ways to make the college even more sustainable. Um, and yeah, I'd have to say being in a, that college environment where everyone's thinking about how to protect the planet is really nice because at Brinsbury and at any agricultural college, we are the next generation of people who are going to be looking after the land and who are going to be responsible for maintaining ethical and um, environmentally sustainable, there I can say it, environmentally sustainable practices. That's really well put. Uh, Sarah, do you want to uh, have a go on that one as well? Yeah, so it's a nice feeling with my course I'm doing. It's a nice course that it not only just focus on, focuses on the animals, but it also focuses on the other living species around us, like the plants and the vivarians and the other plants and trees and everything that's around us. Perfect. Um, Jack, you've got your hand up as well. Uh, yeah, continuing on from what Sarah said um, with the plants and trees, for my course, it's like we're planting, like we're helping the planet by planting newer trees and plants to allow it to try and sustain itself. Mm -hmm. As we're taking so much and, at, and with our course, we try, we do have to try and give back to that. It's nice to be able to put something back into the world, especially as you're, you're all learning about the, the different ways that our, our actions have impacted um, the wider world. It's nice to be able to feed that back in as well. Um, and Rafi as well. Uh, yes, uh, also um, horticulture is a big section on the course, which is about organic horticulture. So it's not all about just using pesticides and fertilizers and chemical. We look at ways to stay organic with composting. And we're also, uh, we have a great compost. And we try and reuse our own resources as much as possible. So very much aware of our sustainability within the horticulture department, I would say. Really, really good answers there. Um, this is more relevant to those of you who work with animals on your course, um, but anyone else I, I'm just happy to contribute. Um, were you nervous about working with the animals uh, before starting your course and how did you overcome this? Lizzie, we'll come to you first. Yeah, so I so my background, both my parents uh, aren't animal related at all. Um, and so I didn't grow up with any animals and I'd never had that animal experience. And then obviously I came to an agricultural college and they're everywhere. Um, but yeah, the I was very apprehensive. The yard staff um, and lecturers uh, talked me through the process and made each step very aware and clear so I could work properly and correctly and safely. Um, and now I can handle an 18 hand beast. <laughs> And Sarah? Yeah, so with um, doing animal management, it's, I was very, very nervous. I had a few fears, not going to lie. Um, but having the, like, support from my friends and the, like, staff around me, they helped me overcome those kind of fears and it just made everything much, I, I felt more comfortable to do it. Amazing. Um, my last question is a two-parter, so I'm going to come to all of you uh, throughout this question. What was your biggest fear prior to starting college and what piece of advice would you give to someone about to start college? So I'm going to come to Rafi for that one first and foremost. Uh, okay, uh, well, um, my first uh, biggest fear was socially that I wouldn't fit in with everyone else and I would be an outsider but everyone but then it was great that in, in the course I'm doing I met people who had the same interests as me and also um, people who um, I don't, I'm not saying anyone in particular but who have the same sort of uh, difficulties because I, I have autism and ADHD and so it was very nice to be able to mix with people who understand how, how, I, how, how I function and um, yes and also uh, the, the second biggest fear would have been 
learning support because I was always supported very well um, in school with with that but that was one of my biggest concerns when transforming but it was great I was very I was welcomed by uh, LSAs on my first day and, and and the team there have been brilliant and reassuring and um, so my advice would be um, apply for what you want to do and just just go for it and there, there's plenty of help the lecturers they're all very encouraging they they know what they're doing and they're, they're keen so and they're they're there to help you so apply for the course and you feel you're in, you want to do in your heart so yeah that's a really lovely piece of advice so um would you say that um just just do something that you find interesting something that you're passionate about and don't necessarily put too much pressure on the other things that go on because that will all be taken care of by the people at the college you're always going to be supported yeah they just sorry you uh can... you carry on just mm -hmm. go ahead and pursue your passion brilliant piece of advice sarah i'm going to come to you next yeah so when i first started college I was very, very nervous. I, because of, I had no pets as well, just like Lizzie. I grew up in a household where there was no pets around me. The only pets out there were there were like family friend pets and stuff. Um, but I always like thought that joining college, it would make me a bit like, I was very nervous, but I soon, grew my confidence even more um and just like Rafi I had a sense that I didn't be belong when I first joined but I started making much more like more friends and stuff and I felt like okay this isn't just any just normal college this is a family that I'm joining um but yeah it's just nice and especially with like the support like me having um dyslexia i found it very difficult to like keep concentrate to remember what was happening in the lesson but having the support in the class from the teachers as well as the tas it was very nice and supportive lovely answer um jack let's go to you next continuing from what sarah and Rafi said uh, you shouldn't be, the main fear I had was people were going to see me different from what I was because of my autism and dyspraxia. And I now realise after being there for so long now, for a while now, that it, it doesn't matter that I have that. Everybody's been so like kind and trustworthy that I've met and that shouldn't stop people from doing it. Their disability shouldn't stop them from choosing what they want to do. And nor should transport, because I live in like a small village. Because that was my second worry, the transport. Because I don't live anywhere close with an actual transport connection fully. But I do have Southwater. So it shouldn't matter that you don't have a trans con an actual connection in your village. As long as you, you should just be able to choose what you want to do and do and go with what you want. I think you've made two really good points there whether it's something as small as getting to the college whether your fear is as small as about getting to the college or your fear is something about how how you personally feel within the college, college environment and how people might understand you or how, no matter how big or small your fear we will help throughout throughout the college community um so yeah really nice that you brought up two points there sarah i'm going to come back to you did you have another point yeah so like with the like whole advice thing like just be yourself don't hesitate to ask anyone for any help because we're all willing to give a helping hand to someone who is struggling because we've all been there at least once um and also when at times when you feel nervous just take a deep breath and think positive mm -hmm. that's the best advice 
to get them really from me yeah, so on that first day <laughs> yeah I had I always had those first day jitters going on like every single time I started a different school and it was just oh I don't know if I'll fit in but yeah I think that's natural for everybody though isn't it that's yeah that's one of those things um Ethan let's come to you um I'd have to say I was probably I wasn't probably I was definitely worried about the social side of it I didn't necessarily have a very social um childhood I was a bit of a recluse and um yeah so I was worried about fitting in but um yeah it's just everyone just makes you feel welcome um just you're always made to feel involved we all go out with each other we all hang around with each other it's just it's really nice so I'd have to say to anyone who's thinking of joining or applying to college just do it and throw yourself into everything because the majority of the time you'll find your fears were completely unwarranted and you'll just get on with it so yeah just throw yourself at everything like me I was um I barely talked to anyone in my first year but um Five years later, you can't shut me up. As I'm sure Lizzie well knows. <laughs> I was going to say, you wouldn't be able to tell from um, today's session. You've uh, definitely got a voice in this session. Um, and Lizzie, we'll finish off with you. Yeah, so um, obviously going off what everyone has said, uh, the first day is always nerve wracking. Um, I didn't have a great time in high school. I didn't have many friends and all my friends um, knew what they were doing with their lives and so when it came to that first day I I was like this is going to be the same all over again I'm not going to have anyone to talk to I'm going to be alone no one's going to be able to help me and then as soon as I got there I could sparked up a conversation immediately because you're talking to people who have the same interests in you so that that is what I would say is you're never not going to have any friends and you're going to meet new people You've, you've picked up on a point there that I just want to sort of finish on is that um, a lot of your friends at school sort of knew what they wanted to do and at, at that point some people can be influenced to perhaps do courses that their friends are doing because you think you've already got that secure network of people around you but it might not necessarily be something that you're interested in um, so would you guys agree that um, a, a, another piece of good advice is to actually choose something that you're interested in and not be too worried about not being able to make friends and that social element as well because as long as you're doing something that you're passionate about you're going to meet those like-minded people i would say you should absolutely do what you should what you want to do and you shouldn't be persuaded by what your friends are going to do because most of my friends have gone off to colleges or very little of them went to Brinsbury at all. Or they've gone off to a higher education college, but I couldn't see me doing that. Mm -hmm. Whereas you can, I could see myself doing something that I liked at Brinsbury. And I think people should realize they should look their art at what we have to offer and set themselves on something they want to do because it should be able, they should be able to follow their own gut and instinct lovely does anyone else have anything else to add today no. well thank you all so much for taking part in uh today's session and um, i really hope that you watching have found today's session useful to hear from the people that were in your position not that long ago Thank you for joining us today. Applications are open now on our website, brinsbury.ac.uk. And we're really looking forward to seeing you in September. Bye everyone.